Okay, so here are two of the resources that we have to publicly host the spot deconvolution results. The first is the Samui app. Um, when you load the web page, actually you, it shows the gene expression for SNAP25. Um, for now, let's take a look at the raw fluorescence of the image. Right now we have DAPI and UN selected. So we can um, zoom in arbitrarily on this full resolution image for this sample. Um, and DAPI marks for the nuclei, so we can actually look at individual cells. Um, we can see the outline of the spots at their actual scale. So we can actually sort of count cells, for example. Um, but in terms of viewing the spot deconvolution results, let's check over here, deconvolution. Let's say we want to look at the decision tree results for all the good endocytes. So I'm going to click over here. Um, let's zoom back out to see the full scale of things. And let me rescale the color. And so here we see um, this nice pattern. And in this sample, I happen to know that this is sort of where the white matter is. So our results do make sense. Um, but we can view any of these results this way. Um, another unique aspect of this um, app is that you can sort of look for points that have very high counts. So this supposedly has eight oligodendrocytes, right? So that's a little abnormal. Let's take a look in here. Um, so we can select the oleg2 fluorescence, which is what really marks for oligodendrocytes and see um, what's going on in the cell. So we do see a lot of these cells have oleg2 fluorescence um, leading to higher counts, but it looks like not all of them. Um, in any case, it's like you can go in, go in and investigate some of these results interactively, which is a unique ability of this app. Um, the other resource we have are these shiny apps. So I'm going to go to the spot level data. Gene static for continuous features. Um, again, you can view all uh, four samples in the SPG. So let's view this third one. Um, similarly, we, we can select what which uh, counts we want. So let's say I'm interested in the layer level excitatory um, layer five as predicted by cell to location. So let's take a look here. And we see this beautiful pattern. Um, and in this case, it's this band right here is actually marking layer five. Um, so it's an interesting pattern here. Um, there's a lot of customization that can be done as well. So let's say we want a threshold to counts that have at least um, one. So just basically filtering out zeros and we can change the color palette. Let's say I'm interested in seeing it in magma. So we now, now we have this thresholded um, image with a different color palette. So a lot you can do here. Um, but I encourage you to check out these two resources.